Hey, in this video I will cover heavy metal regulations in the United States. And the reason that we picked this this dinosaur here is because um, heavy metals are, well, in particular restricted when it comes to toys and other children's products, in case you wondered. So, what is a heavy metal? Uh, there are a few different definitions and it may be classified as such due to a high density, high atomic weight, the atomic number and as said the definition is, is, is not always fixed. Now heavy metals can be found in anything from petroleum products, as plastics, okay, um, and they can also occur naturally. Um, they can be part of alloys. They can be found in paints, in dyes, in inks. So in short you can really find these substances in almost any product. Okay? A few examples lead, mercury, nickel, chromium, arsenic. Probably heard about these before. You, given that you watch this video you probably already have a fairly good idea about why these are restricted. Now, as said, heavy metals can are not restricted to any given material or product, can be found in, well, potentially be found in toys, in paints. There was a few years ago, well, more than a few, I think more than a decade ago, there was this big story about, I think that was Mattel, um, big toy company uh, with lead, uh, lead in, in, in the toy paint and so on. Can be found, like nickel, for example, is quite common in certain types of cheaper jewelry. Likewise, watch cases, electronics, restrictions that apply to components and, and heavy metals, food contact materials, that's pack food packaging, kitchen products, okay, cosmetics, furniture coatings, and even packaging materials. So, just to give an idea, almost everywhere. Now, are heavy metals banned in the United States? No, it's not really the way things work. They, well, let's say that certain levels of heavy metals are unavoidable. They are naturally occurring uh, substances and, and, and for that reason they cannot be banned per se, but they are restricted. Now, to give you one example with CPSIA, uh, which applies to all children's products in the United States, defined as for children 12 years or younger. There are limits, lead limits in this case, that apply depending on the product type. So flashlights, 90 ppm, for some reason. Speakers, a bit more, 100. Don't ask me why. Keep in mind that these limits can also change. CA Prop 65 um, is is uh, also is a substance regulation in in California, and that sets limits for lead, mercury, cadmium, and so on. So give this gives you an idea, and and and, and CA Prop 65 not just for children's products but all consumer products in the U.S. Now the big question. If you're importing products to the US or exporting or you're a manufacturer in the United States, so how do you know which heavy metal test you need for your products? Okay, number one, the specific heavy metals that are restricted for your product depends not just on the product itself, but also which state you're based in. So that's it's it's a bit it's a bit fragmented. In the EU, which is quite ironic because the EU is not a country, um, it's not a single nation, but they still have the same, it's, it's all unified uh, under reach. Um, still, how do you find out? Well, my recommendation is that you simply get in touch with a testing company like Kima, Intertech, SGS, etc., and let them decide for you. They can then make an assessment. They look at the product, they look at the materials, and they can then say, okay, we think that these tests are necessary. They would also take um, your, well, state regulations into consideration. At least they should. They should, at least. 
so that way they keep track of the specific types while well, the specific heavy metals to cover and also the limits because it, it it's as said it could be quite tricky to to try to keep up with that especially given that this this is fluid okay this means that new new limits limits may be adjusted um, for one product for all products for in certain states okay so my recommendation is you really work with the testing companies and let them decide this for you so how much should you, should you expect to pay once again it depends on the number of materials it depends on the number of heavy metals you need to cover in the tests okay let's say that our I would I would estimate anyway that our customers pay somewhere between 100 to 300 for heavy metals testing alone per product so that puts things into perspective then again you can't put a single price tag on this because it depends on the number of materials coating paints and of course ultimately the number of products that you have okay so that's everything for this video if you want to learn more about compliance requirements you can try out our compliance tool on compliancegate.com tool or subscribe for more videos